Okay, here we go. So in an effort to make videos that are actually good for my clients and not just random bro bodybuilders out on the internet, I'm not gonna talk to you about what's the best type of pre-workout formula or what are the best three exercises to blast the chest. I wanna talk about things that actually are gonna impact your life. And the thing that keeps coming up over and over again is how you lift with your legs and not your back. What exactly does that mean? And my issue with that statement isn't that it's incorrect. It's very incomplete because by definition, it doesn't say everything you possibly can say. Let me explain. The statement shouldn't be lift with your legs and not your back. It should be lift with your ankles, knees, and hips joints and not your spine. Let me repeat that again. Lift with your ankle, knee, and hip joints, not your spine. Why is that such a big deal? Well, for number one, it makes you very, very... Look, one of our three goals is to keep you functionally independent for as long as possible. The problem is, if all you ever do is lift with your legs and not your back, and your common definition of that is basically to squat, right? That's what they do in all the office ergonomic things. They'll show a box or whatever, and it'll be on the ground here, and the guy will come up to it like he's some kind of like weightlifter guy, and he'll sit like this, and he'll squat like that. It's incredibly inefficient. Of the three major lower body patterns in which you move about the ankles, knees, and the hips, and not the spine, the most efficient one for lifting a box up off the ground is not the squat, it's gonna be the hinge. Now with the hinge, you're moving about the ankles, knees, hips, and not the spine, but you're moving largely around the hips. So you have a little bit of bend in the knees, a little bit of motion in the ankles, but most of the joint range is gonna be in the hip joint. Much more efficient for picking an object up off the ground. Whereas if you're going to sit in a chair, the most efficient way to do that is gonna to be to do a squat, like that, where there's a little bit more motion around the knees and the ankles than there's around the hip. Likewise, if I wanted to get on the floor, the most efficient way to do that, especially if I'm having issues with my back, is to do what's known as a lunge or a split squat pattern. Again, moving about the ankles, knees, and hips, not the spine, my body is much more upright, and then I get to the ground much more easily. If I tried to squat to the floor, Unless I had some wicked hip mobility, which I kind of do, it's just gonna be kind of hard for most people to get down there in a squat. Likewise, if I try to hinge to the floor, I'm not gonna, this is twerking. This isn't, now nah, you really didn't need that, I apologize. This is twerking, this has nothing to do with actually getting me down to the floor unless somehow you were to prop your hands like that. But most people would just smash their head, pile driver in the ground, pull Arndorf style, right, before they ever got to the floor. Likewise, if you try to, Hinge to the chair, same thing. If you tried to split squat to the chair, you'd hit the damn chair over before you ever got down into the seat. So when you say lift from the legs and not the back, you want to ask, well, which one of the major three patterns you're going to use that's most efficient for the pattern, okay? You squat to seats, you split squat to the floor, you hinge door to pick up. The thing that's similar about all of them is you're moving about the ankles, knees, and the hip joints and not the spine. Right? I said this once before, I'll say it again. Cavemen did not beat each other to death with spines. They used thigh bones and shin bones. Why? Because they're rigid levers. They're designed to deliver force. Spine is not designed that way. What else did I want to talk about with this video? Besides the, the three main patterns. Well, some people get all upset. And they're like, oh, but Shank, people are a gingerbread man. You're like one of those trainers who acts like everyone's going to walk around like this. Like, oh, I'm going to pick up my garbage can and I'm going to go, ugh, ugh, ugh. Look, number one. If you're actually working with someone who's actively in pain or feels a bout of pain coming on, it's not acute, it's more of a chronic situation, or they're getting over a bout of pain, you sure as hell want them to move like a gingerbread man. You want them to keep their spine neutral and move about the hips, knees, and ankles, just like they would lift weights. Why? Because it's going to minimize the amount of stress in that area while the inflammation settles down, while they begin to heal and feel better, and it's going to put the stress in the joints they can most likely handle. Yes, if someone's not in pain, I don't want to see someone probably go pick up this little Louvalenti wicker garbage bag, can, basket and have to brace themselves before picking up the garbage basket. But if someone's actively in pain or is actively getting over pain or feels a bout of pain coming on, you sure as hell want to be uncool because that's going to keep your back from getting irritated, inflamed, and worse. So that's how I deal with that one. Let me just say, because these videos can go on too long, it's already going close to five minutes. Remember all the goals I talk about. Pick one exercise for each of the major muscle groups. Front of the thigh, back of the thigh, chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps. 
every one of those movements involves you moving around in case of the upper body, elbow and shoulder, but having a stable spine so you can lift maximal load. Right? You want to work your thighs and butt, you're not going to do that by having a loosey-goosey back. You need to keep your core stable, whether it's here or here. Right? This is actually advantageous for leverage positions for certain powerlifting movements. But the key is, even when the guys lift with this rounded back like this, it stays locked in place and all the actual motion occurs around the ankles, knees, and hips. What else? Oh, the other thing is, look, if you want a sexy low back, go get a low back tattoo. If you want to load your thighs and butt, you got to keep the spine stable while you move around the ankles, knees, and hip joints. If you look at our goals about what we need to do, the Lyle McDonald Big Three, all right, you gotta, you gotta pick exercises that work the targeted muscle. Spine's not a targeted muscle. You gotta pick things that don't hurt you. Again, spines are not designed to carry a ton of load. Hips, knees, and ankles are. You have to be able to realistically progress at the exercise. It's very hard to realistically progress at an exercise where you can't generate any force because you're relying on your spine instead of the bones and joints that are designed to create and deliver force. And I'd say last but least, if you look at my other big three, so we've got the seven exercises. I don't want to go too long. We're already over six minutes. We got the three rules for picking an exercise. We also have the three goals of all my clients, right? What are my clients doing? They are trying to build a little muscle. Again, it's going to be hard. You already saw why building a little muscle is hard if you do everything from a loose spine. You just simply can't generate force off a loose base. It's going to be hard to be functionally independent for as long as possible if you don't know how to match the appropriate movement pattern to whatever you're trying to do in the most efficient manner possible. Let me go over that again one more time. If you're sitting, you want to squat. If you're going to the floor, ideally you want to split squat. And if you're trying to pick a box up off the ground, you want to hinge. Right? Hinging works predominantly around the hips, a little bit of knees, not much at the ankles. Squats still works at the hips, but it's a lot more knee and ankle. Notice at no point did I go into the red zone of my spine. It's hips, knees, and ankles, not spine. And likewise, the split squat is hips, knees, and ankles, but with a much more upright spine. Help me get an up down girl. So that's about it. Um, oh, and if you, wanna, if you wanna be hard to kill, it's gonna be pretty easy to kill you if you're writhing on the ground in back pain or you can't move from, from level to level because you don't have the right pattern. So that's it, it's gone on too long. No one watch these videos so they've gone on too long, so I'm gonna stop, but that's my video. Look, I love the idea of moving from the legs and not the back, but I just, I don't think it's phrased well enough. It should be move from the ankle, knee, and hip joints, stabilize the spine. That's it, hope that video helps you out, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you.